missed that again. It's out here. And in today's session, I'm going to show you how to finish those short balls with your forehand and you're not know, making unnecessary mistakes. So, one of the most typical mistakes that happens to cut tennis players again, to all of us, and on a weekly basis, is this one. We're having a great rally from the baseline. Everything's going well. We're waiting for that short ball to finally hit that forehand winner, to finally attack. And again, I've seen it on a daily basis. Player comes here, he's, he has that nice short ball, and he just comes there. I'm gonna try to show you here. So let's say I'm on the baseline, we're playing. Yeah? The short ball comes and he just comes, he runs through, and then usually up to 70% again, it goes long. Now, why does it go long? So again, <laughs> we, have to, we have to understand a couple of things, how to deal with those short balls, because they seem to be easy, but as we know, they are tough ones. They are tough ones, sometimes it gets in our head, and I have so many players I work with in Barcelona, and they just tell me, Jan, I'm missing constantly over and over these short balls. I don't know what to do with them. So then we start training the, 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 the you know, the drill, the exercise for this. So I'm just here, I'm just feeding them a short balls. And the first five, 10 shots, uh, obvious pattern. You know, the guy comes here, he just goes and he just runs through it. When you run through that ball, guess what? You're gonna put so much weight and so much speed into it that of course from here, you're gonna overheat. You don't have much space here, yeah? So we want to avoid it. So the number one thing for me, again, from what I've been working you know, with on a daily basis, more or less, is that you need to slow down. You need to stop here. You need to stop before you hit that ball. You can't just run through like this and, and then keep going. When you see the pros again, that is always the, the stopping momentum. Yeah? So they get this position hop, then they slow down, and then they go into the ball and they're hitting nicely. Because they are, they are managing the, the, the weight of their body, they, 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 are, they, are, they are transferring just the right amount of the speed and the weight into the ball. Yeah, they're not overheating because they're not running through. They stop there, they slow down, you can see them stop, and then they go again into the ball. Yeah? So the number one thing, you want to start using that, you know, it's kind of a split step in the way, but it's not just a split step, it's really you stop there and then you keep going. Yeah? Now, so we know this one, this one really helps. This already kind of fixes a lot of things, yeah? The second one you want to start using, you want to start using a little bit more top spin. Because when you come closer to the net, as I said before, you have a much less space, much less distance, yeah? So basically you can't just, uh, I'm gonna show you another one. So you kind of just come here now, let's say you're fixing the step one, you have the, yeah, you slow down here, you make the stop just before you hit it. But then of course, you don't put top spin, you're gonna overheat. Because again, there's nothing that can bring the ball down. You want to put a top spin on the ball, so you bring the ball down. So I'm here, up, and I'm really aware about that spin. And I will be actually hitting much more spin at this, at this stage, even maybe more spin than from the baseline, okay? At least me personally, I do this. I use a lot of spin, I'm very careful with these balls because as we know, these ones are the tough ones, but once you once you get to you know once you get to know how to learn with them, how to deal with them, you know once you learn it how to deal with them, then it's quite it's quite easy and it's not it's not so difficult and you're gonna be finally winning the points. Uh, the third thing what we have here is that the ball is too low sometimes, and again I'm gonna show you example. This. This happens also a lot, so the third one is that the ball is way too low. Let's say it bounces, let's say your opponent hits the slice and it lands somewhere around here on the service line of this, you know, no man's land. And it just really doesn't bounce high, especially on the hardcore, it just stays low. Yeah? And again, we come in here, hop, 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 and we want to attack it, but because we don't get under the ball, we go into the net, of course. Yeah? Because if you don't have it waist high, you can't really control it. So the third one is to remember, you want to get under that ball. You go down here, and then you bring everything up again. So you want to lower, yeah? Again, you go down your legs, down your knees, so you can hit it waist high and you can control it. Yeah. So we got making the stop, 
adding the more spin yeah a little bit more spin be more careful so i would say more more spin less power and the third one getting under the ball of course you want to go lower especially on the low balls of course so i hope you enjoy this session i hope you take something away from this i hope it's gonna help you today we talk a little bit about how to really deal with these short balls so be careful don't run through them yeah otherwise you have no chance to controlling again if you like this session subscribe hit that notification button and if you would like to learn more check the link below there is a link to my premium online tennis training programs with loads of information and a step-by-step -step training plans which will help you to transform your tennis game and to take it to the next level have a great day i'm looking forward to see you in the next session for more